Hello guys, it's me, Ben. I have been working on a little passion project for a while now to celebrate My Hero Academia Season 5. There was a special event that's supposed to happen in Season 5 that I wanted to wait to make this video for, but then I realized it's going to take a bit for it to get here. Manga readers will know what I'm talking about. Oh, Non-manga readers, if you want to be surprised, don't look it up. Uh, and I quickly, and I really, really wanted to make a sequel to this. So, oh, I made a story of My Hero Academia characters got a, a mega stone and a keystone. I made it, I changed the rules to make it more reasonable because people can't mega evolve. It's Pokemon. And, but, and this is kind of the same style of Pro Cross Studios, but I won't be going in and out of the video yet. Oh, except for like one, and so enjoy the story. The pro hero power arm, aka Luca Rio, had always felt like he never had enough power. His quirk was a run of the mill quirk. He had the appearance of a wolf and the ability to power up his attacks. Like many young heroes inspired by All Might, the symbol of peace, he desperately wanted to become a hero that could surpass him. He even learned martial arts to do so. But this was never enough, as he did become a hero with relative ease, but he's always been at a very low ranking, his recent ranking being number 448. He was by no means a bad hero, but he was outclassed by many other heroes with more powerful or flashy quirks. Power refused to give up, and he thought to himself, one big mission and he would make headlines and people would give him the admiration he so desired. That opportunity for a mission like this arose when Power Arms sources led him to the recent activity of the Shihei Azaikai. Their leader had been taken down by some provisional heroes from UA, and a handful of this organization had been arrested. Despite this, rumors had surfaced that the Shihei Azaikai had not only returned but with a new leader and had been doing some questionable work. Due to the Shihei Saikai's recent activity, Power Arm was easily able to get a search warrant. He took a small team to investigate, however, that was the last time Power Arm was ever seen before he disappeared. The mystery of Power Arm's disappearance went on for months until it was brought up to the attention of the Endeavor Agency. Detectives were able to track down the Shihei Saikai and Endeavor along with pro heroes and provisional heroes were to storm this base, similar to the last mission that involved the Shia Hasaikai. Deku, Bakugo, Todoroki, and Endeavor were to enter in first. The group ran through the halls of the building until they found a large room that looked like it had been rushingly cleared out. Endeavor commanded Deku and Bakugo to check the left side while him and Shoto checked the right side. As Deku and Bakugo's search started to come to an end, they saw someone hiding in the shadows. Bakugo shouted, Who's there? Show yourself! Deku and Bakugo's hostility quickly turned into relief and then confusion when they saw a power arm. Oh, power arm, it's just you, said Deku. We were here to rescue you. Are you and your team alright? Power arm just looked at the boys in horror. Please, you need to leave. They put me and my team under their control. They'll do the same to you. You need to leave now before it's too late. Bakugo and Deku shared a confused look, but it was already too late. The gem on Power Arm's wrist started glowing as she said, No! No! Not again! Please! Power Arm shouted, somewhat begging until his body began warping, and when the transformation was done, Power Arm looked at the two students with a feral look on his face. Bakugo and Deku were dumbfounded until Power Arm lunged an attack at them, destroying the ground.
Deku and Bakugo were barely able to dodge. What the heck? screamed Bakugo. Deku responded. It must be some kind of a quirk in hand. I can see that, nerd! Bakugo interrupted. Arm again lunged at Deku. It's too slow to dodge and took the full force of the impact. Power Arm charged after Deku again until Bakugo ran, shouting, Hey, don't forget about me! As Bakugo threw a massive explosion at Power Arm. Power Arm, however, did not dodge. It seemed he was taking the explosion head on to prove that their power could never imagine to match his own. This wasn't said, however, it was implied when Power Arm was revealed to have taken no damage, standing over Bakugo in an intimidating presence. Bakugo started throwing explosions left and right at Power Arm in an attempt to bring him down with fast and powerful strikes. Until Bakugo was stricken down by Power Arm's powered up punch. Deku charged over, screaming, What happened to you? You're supposed to be a hero! Power Arm did not respond. He just kept fairly growling before punching Deku again. Bakugo pulled the clip and released a powerful explosion. Power Arm just batted it away and then ran over to Bakugo, grabbing him before throwing him halfway across the room into another room. Deku was horrified, but instinctively charged the power arm before delivering a 15% St. Louis smash towards power arm's side. It wasn't much damage, but it was damage, and that's what Deku was hoping for. He was wondering if power arm was invincible, but this gave him his answer. Power arm shrugged off the attack and then charged at Deku, reeling back his fists. Deku was preparing for an impact before he heard a loud explosion. But when he opened his eyes, he saw an explosive plume of fire destroying Power Arm. Akugo's previous explosions could never do much damage to Power Arm, so he assumed it must have been Endeavor. But he got his answer as soon as he looked to the source of the explosion. Kachan? Is that you? What Deku saw was a menacing, powerful version of Katsuki Bakugo that he had never seen before. Bakugo j started roaring as he was trying to talk to Midoriya, but words would not come out of his mouth, just snarling and growling. Bakugo then just gave up on trying to converse and then attacked the power arm once again. Deku was trapped in his thoughts. Was this really Bakugo? How did he gain so much power in the short time it took to come back from that room? Why wasn't he speaking? What was going on with him and Power Arm? Deku was quickly snapped out of his thoughts by Endeavor. What's going on here? said Endeavor. It's Power Arm. A gem on his wrist started glowing and he turned into that thing. Bakugo got thrown into another room, and then the same thing happened to him. I don't know what's going on, but Power Arm was talking like he he couldn't have any free will. He didn't have his own. Well, he's not controlling his own actions. I don't know what's going on. Whatever's happened to them, it seems to be enhancing their quirks, strength, and overall power. I tried talking to Bakugo, but he was incapable of talking and by the looks of it, so was Power Arm. Endeavor had no idea what to say. His people skills weren't great, so he couldn't comfort Midoriya as well as All Might would have been able to. So he just said, here's the plan. I will, Endeavor was interrupted by Power Arm falling toward his feet and then reverting back to normal. Go hopped over to the group. The group prepared for a fight as Bakugo had a menacing look in his eyes, but a fight never came as Bakugo just went back to normal as well. Deku started stammering, but Bakugo, what's going on? What happened? What? A Shut up, nerd! Said Bakugo. I tried to talk to you, but I was, but I was roaring and growling instead. So nothing really changed, said Todoroki. What did you say, you icy hot jerk? jerk? All right, you two, settle down, commanded Endeavor. Bakugo, what's that on your wrist? Hey, earlier video, Ben. I'm making these recordings before I do the intro and the outro. So I just wanted to say, hey, but 
I didn't want to take you all out of the story. And yes, I do fix the weird looking abs. I replaced it with an X. And I, uh, I need some work on my, the flame thing. My, 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 my flame art and everything else. Also, I put like a background for Bakugo that made it look weird because this was the last drawing I did and the last two drawings I gave. I just I just gave gave these weird colored backgrounds rather than an actual fully fleshed out background. And because I need to do some more work with backgrounds before I make fully fleshed out backgrounds for all of my drawings. I just wanted to make some noise to fill the silence. So here is Mega Bakugo. Yeah, said Bakugo. What is that on your wrist? The gang looked towards Bakugo's wrist to see a marble-like stone. That that looks like the thing that Power Arm had, said Deku. Bakugo agreed. It was like, like Bakugo, well, what do you remember before you transform into that weird-looking thing? I remember this flashing light in that room over there. Okay, take us to the room you got thrown into. Bakugo begrudgingly took them to the room despite being told he got thrown into a room. When the team made it to the room, they found a large marble like Brock. I'm going to assume this is what the Shihei Saikai has been using to experiment on Power Arm, and that's why you have that that marble on your arm, Bakugo said Endeavor. And if this is the case, we should probably take it away. The pow power that that orb possesses in the hands of villains would be catastrophic. You're darn right it would be, said Bakugo with no hesitation. I thought I could take on the top ten heroes all by myself, all at once. I'm pretty sure that's just your ego talking, Bakugo. What'd you say, you icy hot? Chill out, everyone, said Endeavor. Sh Shoto, go and grab that orb. It's like, all right, said Todoroki. Wait, said Deku. If you can just get powers by touching that orb, and we don't know what this thing can do yet, I don't think you should touch that yet, said, said Deku. Uh, Endeavor and Shoto agreed. Until Shia Saikai members stormed into the building, Grab the Mega Stone! Don't let the heroes get away with it! Todoroki unintentionally ignored Midoriya's crest and, and reached over for the Mega Stone, just snatching it up. However, it was so heavy it felt like he would break his arms, but that slowly didn't become a problem. Because soon, Todoroki would begin glowing and warping, and when the transformation stopped, it revealed a man that was half covered in ice and half covered in flames. Togoroki then froze the entire room. Unintentionally freezing Deku, Bakugo, and Endeavor as well. The heck was that for? Icy hot? Said Bakugo. I, I didn't do that on purpose. Everyone was shocked as Todoroki was able to speak unlike the others. Okay, that... This is why I don't think anybody should be touching the stone, said Deku. Agreed, said Endeavor, as he unfroze everyone. All right, tie these villains up and we'll take them outside to get arrested. At, shortly after this, Shoto turned back to normal. The group headed outside and loaded the stone in the back. Okay. Todoroki had frozen it so nobody would come in direct contact with it. Why would these villains fight so hard to protect a stone? Said Uraraka. This stone has the ability to improve quirks and overall power, said Endeavor. Everyone's blood ran cold, except for those who had already known this. What's going to happen? 
Ryuku said, This is going in a facility until further notice. It's too dangerous to be left in the hands of villains, especially she the Shie Saikai. Well, that makes sense. Bakugo touching the stone is the only reason we got out of there probably alive. <laughs> Whatever, I would have destroyed that guy with or without the stone. No, you wouldn't have. They had a voice that was all too calm for this current situation. Everyone turned around to see a man with an orange beard and fiery hair standing in the middle of, of the street where they were standing. Everyone got into a fighting position as they said, Who are you? What are you doing here? I am the new leader of the Shihei Saikai. But for the sake of names, you may call me Lysander. They weren't shocked by this as Lysander did have the bad guy look. He was tall, he was wearing a suit, he had the demeanor. But they were so surprised that, the, that this man would show himself against two top 10 pro heroes and provisional heroes that had taken down the Shiei Hasaikai before. That stone belongs to me. I made it after all. Well, that's a bit of a lie. And there was extra help, but they're not really alive anymore to prove this. That this. Bysander quickly tapped the gemstone on his wrist as he warped and transformed into a snake-like beast. Gravity, grab the stone. Roger, said Ochako. Ochako, wait! screamed Deku. But it was too late. Ochako had already grabbed the stone. It was so heavy that she fell. The ice that was protecting the stone from direct contact by anyone was broken, and Ochako also began to warp. Ochako started feeling different. She was was she flying? She had didn't remember activating her quirk. She would require to touch her touch her two finger touch together to fly. So she didn't understand how she was flying. She felt she looked the same, but she felt incredibly different. Hmm. Your core collects in lethality, so I don't think the Mega Stone will do too much for you," said Lysander. The group of heroes started attacking Lysander. Ochako was trying to get a hold of the Mega Stone despite her current situation, but then from the ground sprung several Nomus, four in total. It quickly became apparent that the Shia Saikai still had ties to the League of Villains if they had no moves. Deku le leapt into action, and he avoided all of the no moves as he knew his, his attacks would not do much to them, and went for a strike at Lysander. But Lysander blasted a lightning blast straight at Izuku. Izuku was quickly able to block, however, but for the time being he was quickly paralyzed. Lysander reverted his attention back to Ochako, who seemed to be he, taking the Mega Stone and trying to move, move away. Where do you think you're going with my experiment, little girl? I don't know, but away from you, said Ochako. We'll see about that, as Lysander blasted a fire attack. Ochako quickly jumped out of the way, but she jumped a lot higher than what she was expecting. So that's how it affected her quirk," said Lysander. What? What's going on? Lysander quickly jumped in the air after Ochako. Oh, shooting a water blast this time. How? How many powers does he have? He shot fire, lightning. What's next? Can he shoot like gust of air or something? 
Thanks for the suggestion. Before Lysander let out a tornado, it seemingly came from his breath. Ochako was quickly shot back down into the earth. Gravity, are you okay? Said Ryuku. I, I'm fine. I think, I think this power protected me. Tander fell back to the earth, aiming to hit Ochako with his tail. Ochako jumped out of the way again, but with more control this time, as she was starting to get used to her new form. <laughs> How annoying must you heroes be? How it's our impact! Said screamed Bakugo coming in from the side. Lysandra simply flicked him away with a swift with a flick of his tail, then clicked in Bakugo's head that Lysander was using his Megastone, so he would have no chance, unless... Bakugo quickly tapped the, the gemstone on his wrist. Bakugo, what are you doing? Screamed Endeavor. Shut up, I got this! As Bakugo started warping and changing, Bakugo ran with a barrage of explosions following him. How dare you! That power is not yours to- ah! Screamed Lysander as he took in several clashes and explosions from Bakugo. Todoroki saw ba what Bakugo was doing, and he said, thought to himself, Looks like we need every edge we can get, as he, he too touched the gem on his wrist. Shoto, stop! We don't know what this thing is doing! And I got this. As Todoroki immediately began glowing and warping, until he too... That was had mega evolved. It, it was now an even fight with two pro heroes and two mega evolved provisional heroes facing them, and it seemed that things started to turn around for the heroes, until Lysander to, uh, had grabbed the stone from Uraraka. His quirk g gave him the edge in overpowering them, as his quirk was some sort of mutant emitter class quirk that allowed him to shoot lightning, fire, and water, and, and, and even tornadoes, it was, it was severely increased by the Megastone. However, a familiar face rejoined the fight. Wyoming smash! screamed Deku. Lysander took a massive blow to the head and was quickly trying to collect himself to find the Megastone once more. He looked at Deku to see him making a break for the Megastone, because Lysander had dropped it while he took the massive hit. Lysander started shooting water and fire, but nothing worked, as Deku was able to, uh, as able to hear, the, hear the attack from behind and dodge it accordingly. It was almost like something was helping him see the attack before it even happened, but Izuku shrugged it off, as it probably was just his intuition. Izuku was in three feet of the stone before Lysander grabbed his ankle and tried to throw him across the, the, the battlefield. However, Izuku grabbed Lysander's hand, arm and flipped him, and flipped him using 20% of his power, which did leave him a bit sore. I will not let you get that stone, Lysander. Or will I, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku was shocked as Lysander knew who he was but then shrugged it off as he probably realized that that it was just he, that because he worked for the League of Villains. Izuku ran for the stone one more time, and Lysander also ran for the stone. However, Izuku's early, earlier start gave him the chance to get the stone quicker, and he, he was able to touch the stone. Lysander gr grabbed Izuku and threw him across the battlefield once more, right. but when he looked to his hand, Izuku was gone. Lysandra looked, scanned the battlefield. No, no, no until his eyes locked locked with Izuku's Izuku's whose warping blue eyes Izuku who had been thrown across the battlefield but before that he was able to get a finger on the stone and he was now able to mega evolve 
Bakugo, who was in the background snickering, or roar snickering, whatever that was, whatever he was doing. He was definitely laughing at Deku. What is it? That as Bakugo cannot, as Bakugo cannot eat, not speak, he could not tell Izuku that he looked like a weird derpy rabbit. It, but Izuku just shrugged it off and started attacking Lysander. Lysander, I will say this again, you will not have the stone at the end of this day. We will, and it will be locked up in a secure facility. No, I will not let my art be strifled by the law. Oh, okay, that that was very weird. Why would, no. I'm gonna leave that in the video. Izuku was seemingly teleporting, but in reality, he was just moving so fast the eye could not track it. Izuku felt it. He was using 70% of one for all. This new form braced his body in a way that he could use more of his power, but he knew if he pushed himself too hard, he would end up breaking his bones. So Izuku just kept hammering away at Lysander. Detroit smash! Deku said as he hammered as he hammered into Lysander. After a few more blows, Lysander was down. They were quickly able to finish off the no moves, and the group reverted back to normal. The power arm was revealed to be under some sort of mind control, so he wasn't going to serve any jail time. And the the students with new mega forms were were uh, approved to have to be able to use those mega forms freely, as they would not cause them any harm. As for the mega stone, it was put in a secure facility somewhere even the provisional heroes did not know of. However, for Lysander, he was found to have broken out of prison. What was more perplexing was how he broke out of prison. The the temporary facility he was being held in was burnt to the ground by very powerful flames. And that was a pretty cool way to end the video there with the place being burnt to the ground. And you know that's Dabi, but you know his planes aren't powerful enough, so it needs to be a mega evolved version of Dabi. That's the part of that video I'm going to be really excited to make. Maybe Toga, maybe Shigaraki, I won't spoil anymore. Alright. And I just realized that it's almost been a year since my, since my first drawing video like this. this and... And that I I decided to make the next video come out at that time, so this that'll make me have a deadline. So I'll make it quicker, and I'll make it, and I'll make it as cool as I can because this is my art from last year, and this is my art from this year. <laughs> I I really really upgraded it in just a year. I didn't expect to just to upgrade in just a year. I haven't been bad at regular art, it's just my digital art. It feels so different compared to traditional art. And that's probably because you're using a pencil and indirect tools rather than a pencil and a paper or in markers and stuff. So not, I don't mean to ramble. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below what your favorite part of the video was. And comment down below what kind of villain you want to see either. I can already confirm three. I might make five or six. Lysander is definitely going to be in that video. So, so the the fourth, the, the so the sixth, or the, so the sixth villain is kind of up to you guys. Is if if you comment down below. No. All right. See you next time, guys. Peace out.